Well, hello and welcome back. Um, in this particular lecture, we're going to talk about the uh, appendicular skeleton. This is a skeleton that hangs off the axial skeleton. And uh, so um, the appendicular skeleton is going to be made of uh, somewhere around 126 bones uh, out of the 206 that uh, make up the human body or human skeleton. And uh, so if you look at the numbers of bones, uh, the pectoral girdle is going to have four bones. You're going to have two clavicles, you know, one on each side. So you have a right and a left uh, clavicle. The scapula, there's two of them, one on each side as well. And these make up what we call the pectoral girdle. What the job of the clavicle and scapula are is to articulate to the, to the axial skeleton the limbs, um, the upper limbs. So in regards to your upper limbs, there's about 60 uh, bones that make up the upper limbs. Uh, on each side, you have a humerus. You also have a, a radius, an ulna. Uh, your carpal bones are 16 bones. These are the bones that make up uh, your wrist. You can see them down here. So there's eight of those on each side. You have five palm bones, or metacarpals, and you have 28 phalanges. So, you know, it's not a daunting task to learn 206 bones because 26, I mean, 28 of the bones uh, are just named phalanges on your hand. So it's not that daunting of a task. Your pelvic girdle consists of two hip bones, and this will make up the, um, the bones of the upper uh, arm and pectoral girdle. Um, pelvic girdle is going to be two, and we'll, in, we'll uh, show you the number of bones for your lower leg bones in just uh, a few minutes. So there are a few bones that you need to know and a, a few parts that you need to know. So um, we'll start with the uh, scapula. So the scapula, this is from an anterior view, is really on your back surface of your body or dorsal side of your body. Its job is to help articulate the humerus, this upper arm bone, to the axial skeleton. And uh, so this is an anterior view uh, of, the, of the scapula. And uh, you can see it's a really flat bone. Um, there's a tremendous number of muscles that attach to this bone, and uh, when we study the muscular system, you'll, you'll see how really important this uh, bone is. Um, all of these little spines and processes and things that are, um, that are on the uh, scapula are there to uh, serve as attachment points for bones. So if you have to circle, remember, I want you to highlight uh, during this lecture, highlight some of the parts that you're, you're uh, responsible for. So there is an acromion or acromion process that uh, muscles attach to. Um, that's an important part to know. And the coracoid process is important to know from this particular angle. If we look at it from the back surface, you can see the chromium is kind of rough. It's a little process that sticks out. And uh, you can't see the coracoid process very good from this particular view, but you can see it from our frontal view or from an anterior view. And it looks like a crow's beak in coracoid or cora. Coracoid uh, refers to a crow's beak uh, as a root word, and um, or karak is the root word for crow's beak, and uh, it actually looks like a bird's beak when you get it in hand and look at it. So the acromium and coracoid process, these are really important parts to know, and the spine is important too. There are going to be muscles that are going to be sitting in these various fossas that you can see, the supraspinatus fossa and the infraspinatus fossa. You'll have muscles that will that will be uh, in those particular parts. From a lateral view, there is a cavity called the glenoid cavity, where the humerus, so the humerus, the head of the humerus, will sit right in this particular cavity, and that's how it articulates with the um, scapula. This is just the acromion and the coracoid process from a uh, a different view, and uh, and so you should also know the spine. This is not the greatest view to see the spine. Uh, but um, this is a better view of the spine in this particular uh, posterior view. So that's the scapula. Again, it's the, 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 the purpose of it is to articulate the humerus to the axial skeleton, but also to serve as attachment points for all kinds of muscles. Now, it's important that you realize that you have to know the bones because when we study the muscular system, you're going to need to know where the muscles are articulating with the, with the skeleton. So you might as well go ahead and learn it now so you can get a good grade on this test and also you can uh, get a good grade on your muscles as well. Um, this is showing you some uh, of the uh, pectoral girdle. You can see the scapula is part of that, and so is the clavicle. Uh, the clavicle, you probably know, is kind of like your collarbone, but you can see it articulates down here um, 
it articulates down here to the acromion of the uh, of the scapula, and uh, and then it articulates with the uh, with the manubrium of the of the sternum. So there is articular cartilage to pad that right there. Um, so you can disarticulate that. You you probably heard of someone talking about um, having a separated clavicle uh, or dislocated clavicle. All right, so uh, this would be your upper arm bone, and these are called. Uh, each of these is, is a humerus, and this is showing you a uh, front view, and it's showing you a back view of this. Um, so this side over here is the posterior view, and this is the anterior view over here. So this is posterior, and this is anterior over here. Um, so from the back view, you can see um, the greater tubercle. Remember, if I circle it, you're responsible for knowing it. You should know the head, so that's what a head looks like. Um, there is then uh, a, a neck. You have an anatomical neck and a surgical neck. So those are parts that uh, connect to the head. Um, over here on the on the anterior view, you can see what the greater tubercle looks like. It's a huge process. Um, there's also the intertubicular groove. So that would be a groove that uh, that uh, tendons will actually pass through. Um, and uh, and uh, you also have the lesser tubercle there. So there is a deltoid tuberosity that uh, muscles attach to, and it's kind of a roughened area on the humerus. Down at the bottom, you have uh, on the posterior side the olecranine fossa. This is where your ulna connects to your uh, humerus. The olecranine fossa is uh, is important because if, if you didn't have an olecranine fossa, the ulna couldn't connect to the humerus and bend in the right um the right way that it does. Um, on the front side, you have a coronoid fossa, and uh, again, this is where um, the ulna is going to articulate with um, the humerus. So there are many parts: the capitulum, the trochlea, or trochlea, and uh, these are just rounded surfaces that uh, that the humerus and, uh, and excuse me, that the um, radius and ulna will attach to. And then you have various epicondyles, which are little processes that stick out. Um, a lateral and a medial that stick out and are connecting points to um, um, for muscles and uh, and or ligaments. If we move down from the humerus, we get to the uh, radius and ulna. So the radius is is going to be the uh, bone that's in line with your thumb, and the ulna is going to be in line with your pinky. If you follow your pinky down, it forms your elbow. Your elbow is made by this process here called the olecranine process. And uh, you can see it right here, the olecranine process. So this is another portion of it right here. So if you ever elbow somebody in the gut with your, with your elbow, it's the olecranine process that you're basically jamming into their gut. So um, these are pretty important parts to know for um, the olecranine process is a very important part to know for the, uh, for the ulna. There's other processes. The coronoid process prevents your arm from um, from coming too close to the to the um, to the uh, humerus. So your arm can only bend. I'm kind of showing you in the picture there. Your arm can only bend in a certain way because uh, because of the coronoid process articulating with the humerus. Um, you should know for the radius, the head of the radius, and the rad radial tuberosity. Radial tuberosity is a little process that comes off. The side there that's an articulating point, uh, not an articulating point, but a, a part that uh, that uh, various um, tendons will connect to. All right, so uh, coronary process you should know, and uh, the radial notch is just a place where the radius comes and articulates with the uh, with the ulna. I'm trying to reduce down how many parts you need to know, so that's why I'm kind of limiting some of the parts. You should know the head of the ulna. Um, and uh, you should know the styloid process of the ulna and the styloid process of the uh, of the radius. These are important parts to know because they make up. When you look at your wrist, there are little bumps on either side of your wrist. Okay, so that's the ulna and the radius. Where you really earn your money in anatomy um, is learning the uh, the carpals. So the carpals, we have carpals which make up your wrist, the metacarpals which make up your palm, and the phalanges that make up your fingers or digits. And uh, you will be responsible for knowing uh, all of the carpal bones. And uh, I like to use a little mnemonic. Um, I use the mnemonic time to come home, 
so leave there pronto okay in each one of these letters time to come home so leave there pronto each of those letters represents the first letter of each of the carpels in order now there's eight of them so so if i'm going from um from this way so going from this way to this way so i have trapezium trapezoid capitate hamate and then the next row so going over to the next row i have scaphoid lunate triquetrum and then pisiform so these are all the bones of the wrist in order okay so this is trapezium trapezoid capitate hamate so those make up that first little row that connect to the uh, to the meta uh, carpals and then i have scaphoid lunate triquetrum and then pisiform so the mnemonic works the same way it just works the opposite side over here so this is something when you get into lab you really want to take and uh and see how the um hands are connected i won't put these carpals in a bag and shake them up and have you identify them but you will have to in an articulated hand you will have to know them in order and know and be able to identify all of the uh, parts for that so let me just say their name one more time so we have trapezium trapezoid capitate hamate scaphoid lunate triquetrum and then pisiform so those will make you earn your money in anatomy so those are some of the harder bones to learn and you'll have to spend some time uh, working on um, on doing that all right so if we move down to the uh, pelvic girdle um, the pelvic girdle is going to be made up of the uh, pelvic bones so um, the pelvic bones are are here let me go back sorry about that so your pelvic bones are uh, here and here they're also known as coxal bones they're connected here in the front in the anterior portion are connected by the symphysis pubis and then there is a uh, an iliosacral joint that connects the uh, the two pelvic bones to the sacrum that we talked about earlier so there's a joint right there called the iliosacral joint and uh, the 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 of course the pelvic bones have parts that uh, that are important to know um, these are tremendously large and powerful um, uh, bones they have uh, a lot of attachment points for for muscles to attach to so uh, so let's go ahead and we'll learn some of the parts so this is kind of this expanded region down here is called the ilium and then we have a region down here that makes up this this part right down here and that's called the ischium and then the part over here is going to be known as the pubis okay so the pubis and the uh, and the ischium are going to create this obturator foramen this is a, a hole one of the largest holes in the body and uh, it allows for certain passage of blood vessels and nerves through uh, we already said that the symphysis pubis is the connecting point of fiber cartilage between the two uh, pelvic bones and uh, and so those are some of the parts of the of the uh, pelvic bones that you'll need to know this is an x-ray over here showing you here's the ilium and here's the pubis and the ischium so and the obturator foramen you can see uh, pretty easily right here so that's the obturator foramen um, so those are some of the parts from this particular view that you uh, should be aware of so from a different view uh, so this would be from a lateral view over excuse me let me go back here to my pen so from a lateral view this is a lateral I don't know why my pen's doing that let me go back give me one second see if I can get back there so for a lat from a lateral view it's uh, which is this one over here on the right hand side I'm not quite sure why I can't get my pen going here so there we go so from a lateral view over here um, you can see the acetabulum this is the connecting point where the head of the femur sits into that and articulates with the uh, with this pelvic bone over here you can see the pubis you can see the ischium the obturator foramen located right there um, and uh, and the iliatic crest is pretty important because we'll have a lot of a, a lot of muscles that will attach to that so there are differences between males and females you can kind of study this chart uh, and look at it but uh, you can see that a male's pelvis is kind of taller and it's not as wide as a female's pelvis so this would be male um, over here 
and uh, this would be female over here. And uh, you can see a female's um, pelvic uh, outlet. So this portion, the pelvic outlet is wider because that's the birth canal. That's what the baby has to come through. Males is much more narrow. So if we look at the pubic angle down here, we're looking at 100 degrees or more. So it's very acute here, a little bit more acute here. And we're looking at 90 degrees. Um, the acetabulum is a pretty important part. It's it's uh, directed laterally in the in, in the male and faces kind of forward in the female. So that's a little bit of a difference between male and females. But you can look at all the other various characteristics. You know, bone density is greater in the male, lesser in the female. Uh, bone markings are more prominent in male, less prominent in females because male muscles uh, have a greater exertion typically on those particular parts. Okay, so those are just some of the characteristics there, and you, you could take a look at uh, your printed notes and look at all the other ones if you'd like to see those. So just take a second and tell me, so A, is A the male or is B the male by looking at this? And if you said B, you would be correct. There are other characteristics that, that uh, deviate between males and females. Um, general appearance of the skull uh, it's much heavier and rougher in males than females. It's about 10% larger in males, the cranium is, than females. The forehead's more sloping in males. It's a little bit more vertical in females. S larger sinuses in males, smaller in females. Teeth are larger in males than in females. And, uh, and uh, there's a, a squatter, excuse me, square or larger mandible compared to the to the more narrow and less less robust mandible and females. So by looking at the a cranium, you can tell, uh, if you're an expert, you could tell the difference between males and females. So moving down from the uh, pectoral, uh, excuse me, the pelvic girdle, we then have the femur. So this is the femur and it's going to be the upper leg bone. And uh, so you're seeing uh, an anterior view here. This is the anterior view, and this is the posterior view over here. So just looking at a few of the parts you're, you should be familiar with, we should be familiar with the head and the neck. Um, the greater trochanter is a, is a very large uh, process on this bone, and there's a lesser trochanter as well, which is less prominent in this particular thing, uh, bone. The fovea capitis is the connecting point uh, for a ligament that connects it to the pelvic bone. It's a little depression uh, on the head of the femur. If we go down to the bottom, there is a patellar surface where the patella or kneecap uh, articulates. Uh, we also have condyles. So there is a lateral and a medial condyle. These are rounded surfaces. And above those, we have the epicondyle and uh, the epicondyles, which are roughened surfaces above the condyles. There's a lateral one to the side and a medial one to the midline of the body. So articulating with the femur will be the tibia and fibula. Be careful, a lot of people want to call this tibula, but it's the tibia, and then the, it's not the fibia, but it's the fibula. So the front shin bone um, that you can feel if you run your finger along the medial anterior surface of your lower leg, that will be your tibia. And it's going to have a tuberosity that comes off, tibial tuber tuberosity. There is a lateral condyle, rounded surface, and a medial condyle as well. Um, the fib fibula is going to have a head at the very top. And uh, both of them make up the, uh, if you look at the fibula and tibia, there's a medial malleolus. Um, that, that the tibia makes, and this is going to be that bump. If you feel the the ankle, there's a bump that sits that uh, that comes off, and that's the medial malleolus on the lat. Excuse me, the lateral side. There is the lateral malleolus, uh, and that's part of the fibula. This is the patella, and this is just the anterior view of the patella. And all you need to know here is uh, just the bone called the patella, and that's how it articulates with the. Um, with the uh, with the bottom part of the femur, there's your condyles there. These rounded surfaces, the patellar surfaces, right there that it articulates with. So going down to the to the very bottom, uh, here we have the uh, the uh, tibia. So this will be the uh, lateral malleolus, and uh, let me make sure that's right. 
yeah, so medial malleolus, my apologies on that. That's the little ankle part that comes off there. And uh, there are certain uh, bones uh, that are called uh, tarsals that you have to be familiar with. So all of these bones here are what we call tarsals. We then have metatarsals, which are your um, the bones that make up the palm of the foot, and then we have the phalanges, which makes which, which makes up the digits of the foot. So your heel bone is called the calcaneus, and let me show you a different uh, a different view of that. So these again are you know kind of hard to lecture from, but we have tarsals, metatarsals, phalanges. The tarsals are are, are um, bones that you just have to. I mean that's where you make your money. Uh, in, in anatomy. So starting from the medial, uh, we have the medial cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, lateral cuneiform, so that's this is going to be the medial, this is the intermediate, and this is the lateral cuneiform. We then have a cube-shaped um, bone that's called the cuboid, um, and then we have over here the navicular, then we have the talus, uh, which articulates with your, um, with your tibia, and then the calcaneus is this bone back here that makes up what we call the heel. So all of these are bones you have to know. These aren't parts. These are bones that you have to know. We then have the metatarsals, and they're numbered 1 through 5. And uh, we have um, the phalanges down here. So you need to know those as well. So you need to know all your tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. The phalanges that have three um, digits, your toe only has two um, two phalanxes, um, but you should know distal phalanx, middle phalanx, proximal phalanx. This is closer to the attachment point, this is in the middle, and this is the furthest from the attachment point. Okay, so those make up your bones of your foot. Again, you know, you can listen to this all day long, and, uh, but when you get the bones in your hand, that's the way you really study for that. Well, that was a quick little lecture on the uh, appendicular skeleton. And uh, I'm just trying to outline some of the parts you need to be responsible for and just naming them so you can understand how they're named. So, um, so I will uh, see you in class, and uh, I hope that your study of the bones is very successful. So I will talk to you later on.